You need to know and understand your spiritual enemy. This is why we're talking about the structure of the kingdom of hell. Before I begin, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss any new content from our channel. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. Now, before I begin to describe the structure of the kingdom of hell, it's first and foremost important that you understand who truly has the ultimate rank, the ultimate authority. So let's look to the scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, 19 through 23. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated him in the place of honor at God's right hand in heavenly realms. Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. No matter how powerful a demonic spirit is, it's important to remember that there is no spirit more powerful than the Holy Spirit. And now that we understand that, let's take a look at the enemy's influence and how his kingdom is structured. For that, we look to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Notice that the scripture calls the enemy the prince of the power of the air, not the prince and the power of the air. In other words, his influence is in the air. And by that, the scripture means that his influence is within the earthly realm. The scripture says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There are several different heavens. The Bible describes three. The first heaven described is found in Genesis 6, Psalm 8, 8, and James 5, 18. That's earth's atmosphere or the sky. Next, we see the cosmos or the universe. This includes the sun, moon, and stars. This is referenced in Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 2, and Psalm chapter 8, verses 3 and 4. And then there is the third heaven, God's dwelling place, referenced in Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 14, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. So Jesus is the ruler of the heavenly realms. He has the highest seat of authority. Now, even though the enemy has some influence within the world, that doesn't mean that he's still not under God's power ultimately. God has the highest jurisdiction. God has the highest authority. God has the greatest level of power. So the enemy may have pockets of influence throughout the earth, but ultimately all things are under the umbrella of God's power and authority. So Satan may have some rule within the earth, but God has rule above it. Satan has influence in the sub-dominion of earth, but only because man has surrendered that dominion. So now that we understand a little bit about Satan's influence, let's take a look at the structure of his kingdom. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Here in Ephesians chapter 6, we see four things listed. Principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Let's first look at principalities. Now, contrary to popular belief, a principality is not a strong demon. In fact, a principality is a region. It's a stronghold of the enemy in the earth. It's a region highly influenced by demonic power. So a principality is a place or a region, and the demon in charge of this region is referred to as a prince demon. We see an example of this in Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia 
blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. Now, notice here that hell is structured with princes. So Satan is the prince of princes, but Jesus is the king of kings. He still has the higher power. So prince demons rule in regions, and those spiritual regions correlate to earthly regions. We see that again in Daniel 10, 13. We see the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So it attaches this spirit prince to an earthly kingdom. So principalities correlate with earthly regions. So there are principalities assigned to nations, to cities, to states, to provinces, to regions. Next, we see the term powers. Ephesians 2.2 2 says this, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now, I read this verse at the top of the message, but this verse also sets the context for that term powers. This is also not a reference to a sentient demonic being, as we understand demons today. This is a reference to the chain of command. This is a reference to the structure, the organization of hell itself. So, power is a reference to the chain of command or the overall structure of hell, and a principality is a reference to a region. Power is the system, principalities are the regions. Just as we talk about the government power, we're talking about structures here. So, powers is a reference to the overall structure of hell. Next, we see the term rulers of the darkness of this world, and we also see the term spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, these two terms, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places, both refer to actual beings. Rulers of the darkness of this world refer to demons and possibly to demonically influenced people, such as world leaders. Spiritual wickedness in high places is a possible reference to ranked demons, or fallen angels, or even prince demons. So let's talk now about how demonic beings are organized themselves. Daniel chapter 10, again, 12 and 13. Then he said, Don't be afraid, Daniel, since the day you first began to pray for understanding and to humble yourself before God. Your request has been heard in heaven. I have come to answer your prayer. But for 21 days, the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia blocked my way. Then Michael, one of the archangels, came to help me, and I left him there with the spirit prince of the kingdom of Persia. So again here, I want to emphasize that prince demons represent regions, but the regions themselves are called principalities. Now, how does a demonic being, how do demonic powers gain principalities? Well, that has to do with human beings. Remember, Satan can only have the dominion that man surrenders to him. So, a principality is usually a place populated by very wicked people. I think of certain regions of the United States that are known for debauchery and partying and perversion. Those have become principalities because the influence was welcomed by the people who live there. So, demonic beings don't necessarily possess dirt or ground or buildings. Rather, they gain influence through disobedient people and therefore gain greater power and influence over the regions that those disobedient people occupy. So this is what's called a prince demon. The one who rules over that region where demonic beings have heavy influence. So prince demons are highly ranked. Now, in Mark chapter 9, verses 20 through 29, we see this story of a man who brought his demon-possessed son to Jesus' disciples. The disciples couldn't cast the demon out of him, so Jesus came and did so instantaneously. Now, Jesus says, after he cast the demon out, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Some translations say prayer and fasting. Notice here that Jesus says this kind. This clues us into the fact that demonic beings are also categorized by kind. We see some examples of this. Um, Revelation 9, Apollyon. 
1 Timothy 4.1, seducing spirits, that's a kind. Luke 13.11, spirits of infirmity, that's a kind. Revelation 16.14, miracle working spirits. Acts 16.16, 16, spirits of divination. And Malachi chapter 3, verse 11 could be referencing a demonic spirit, maybe, maybe not, but that would be called the devourer. Now it's important that we don't become obsessed with demonology. Remember that what the Bible gives us in regards to spiritual warfare is enough. The Holy Spirit inspired the Word, and He equipped us. He gave us everything we needed to know. Some people dig into demonology, and they obsess over the occult, using the excuse, well, God's people perish for lack of knowledge, or I need to understand my enemy, or I need to understand the strategies of the enemy. We must remain fixed firmly on the secure foundation of God's Word and not obsess about these things, but in fact, the Bible does tell us that there are different kinds. So we see that demons are organized by rank, they're organized by kind, and finally we see in Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 through 45, that demons actually have different levels of evil. Watch this. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it passes through dry places seeking rest. Notice there that demonic beings get tired, but finds none. Then it says, I will return. Right there it says, I will. That shows you demonic beings have wills. I will return to my house from which I came. And when it comes, it finds it empty, swept, and put in order. So demons are strategic. It returned to the place where it once had influence. Then it goes and brings with itself seven other spirits more evil than itself. Notice here that demonic beings strategize. They cooperate with one another. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this evil generation. But the key point here is that it calls seven other spirits more evil than itself. So, demonic beings can be categorized by rank, we see that in Daniel 10, by kind, it's referenced in Mark 9, and in levels of their evil, that's Matthew chapter 12. I want to pray for you now. I want to pray that God would help you to overcome your enemy. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift that one to you now who is seeking victory over their spiritual enemy. And Father, I pray that the anointing of the Holy Spirit would break every mindset and reveal every truth. Thank you, Lord, that you have defeated the kingdom of darkness. Thank you, Lord, that you are seated high above it all, that all power, all authority is given to you. And so, Lord, we submit ourselves to that authority that we might walk in it I pray, Lord, that you would make us mighty warriors in the Spirit and cause us to walk in the authority and power that you have given to us. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, Amen. Here now is a question for conversation. This is the final part in our spiritual warfare series. What are your questions on spiritual warfare? Let me know in the comment section right now, and I'm about to read your comments from a previous video, but first, I want to invite you to be a part of what God is doing through this ministry. Everything that you see coming out of this ministry, the media, the live streams, the events, the Holy Spirit School, all of it is donor supported. So help this ministry continue to grow strong. Help us continue to fulfill our mandate to reach souls, to build believers, to spread the gospel all around the world in the power of the Holy Spirit. Consider right now a one-time gift into this ministry or becoming a monthly ministry supporter. You can give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate, and you can become a monthly ministry partner by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. All of your support, one-time or monthly, large or small, will help us continue to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. Now, here are your comments from a previous video titled, How to Cast Out Demons the Biblical Way. Catherine's Journey wrote, Growing up, casting out demons was only done by ordained ministers. Through teachings like this, I have learned 
that we are all called to operate in the supernatural. God bless this ministry. Demacy Lota wrote, Thank you, David, for this wonderful teaching. I myself have spent many hours trying to cast out demons, but the result was hurting my voice and getting tired. However, when I surrendered to the Holy Spirit, he drove out the demons himself. And Magdalena wrote, Every time I listen to these teachings, I feel strengthened and motivated to stick with the word. These teachings give me a strong desire for Jesus. Thank you so much. And Brenda Teo wrote, Thank you, Brother David. Your teachings are a revelation of how Jesus walked on earth with such power and authority. One more time, I want to remind you, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and don't forget to click that notification bell so that you don't miss any new content. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. And until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.